Now there are plenty of reasons why athletes get fired. Maybe it's poor performance. Maybe they're having issues with the team. Maybe even having a contract that's too expensive. So you can imagine it got people's attention when a Brazilian soccer player got fired for farting? <laughs> Say what? Yes, you heard it right. He was allegedly fired for having a loud and stinky farts in the locker room. Oh my goodness, I can't imagine being in that stinky locker room, everyone sweating, everyone all disgusting, and having the stinky fart there. Ah! That's one sports line you won't hear very often. In today's video, we're going to discuss what rarely gets talked about, farting, everyone's favorite topic. We'll discuss exactly what is it, what causes it, why you may have excess gas, and at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you my tips on what you can do to tame that gas. So maybe you won't get fired from whatever job you're in. Guys, let's talk about poop. Howdy y'all, Dr. Islam here, AKA your poop guru, trying to give you the best tips and tricks so you can live your best life from the top all the way down to the bottom. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe so you can get more videos like you're learning in today's video. Whether they're loud or silent, or even deadly, everyone farts. Yes, even your poop guru, I fart as well. Now doctors, meaning me, say that the average person can fart between five to 15 times per day. Not a big deal. And it is a normal part of digestion to fart. It's okay to fart guys, I'm giving you permission. It's a not a big deal, everyone does it, and it's a normal part of being a human being. Now even though farting is a normal part of your digestion, farting all the time or having excess farting is not normal. And excess farting called flatulence can make you feel self-conscious, uncomfortable, bloating. You're like, ah, oh, when is the next one going to come? And it could be possibly a sign of a health problem. In fact, if you fart more than 20 times per day, I will tell you that's something that needs to be investigated. So exactly what causes farting? Well, number one, it's kind of weird but swallowing air, especially excess air, can cause farting and burping. So whenever you swallow air, it has to leave somewhere. It doesn't just stay in your body. So one way it can go is whenever you fart. And sometimes there are actions that we do that cause us to swallow too much air, whether it's whistling, whether it's sipping through a straw, chewing too fast, have you ever been told you're a sloppy eater? Or sometimes you just take a lot of breaths whenever you're doing normal activity. Sometimes it's chewing gum or sucking on hard candy that will cause you to bring in excess air. You breathe in that excess air and that air has to go somewhere. I know it's weird, but something as simple as that. Another reason are certain foods. I know I'm sure you've heard this where certain foods like beans can cause a lot of gas and that is true. You actually may have noticed in yourself there are certain foods that tend to produce a lot of gas. So foods such as beans or alcohol, dairy products, and high fiber vegetables like cabbage, Brussels sprouts and broccoli tend to produce a lot of gas. And for some people, this can be a reason, even though they're trying to eat healthy, why they're having a lot of gas inside their gut. Next, it could be what's going on in your gut microbiome. In your gut microbiome, you have trillions of bacteria, fungi, and viruses working and interacting with each other. And there are some individuals that have an excess predominance of bad bacteria, leading to a condition called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or SIBO. This is when you have too much bad bacteria, and that bad bacteria can ferment and produce a lot of gas, making you either burp a lot or fart a lot. Then lastly, constipation. Yes, if you're full of or you're full of poop, that poop is gonna produce gas. It's a natural consequence of what is going on. And so if you're not having good bowel movements, you don't feel completely emptied out, you're straining and pushing and nothing is going through, that's going to produce a lot of gas. Now, excess gas can also be a sign of other health problems as well. And these are the health problems that could be a sign of excess gas. Number one, gastrointestinal specific orders like irritable bowel syndrome or IBS, constipation or pelvic floor dysfunction. What these all have in relation is the inability to sometimes use the restroom. You're either having constipation, straining, or not pushing a lot. Number two, food intolerances. In fact, there are certain foods you may not realize that you are intolerant to. And the three most common ones include dairy, gluten, and fructose, which is a very common sugar found in so many different things. Number three is celiac disease. This is actually an autoimmune disease in which your body attacks itself because you have the inability to digest gluten. Very different from a gluten intolerance. 
<laughs> Number four, I mentioned this before, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. When you have a predominance of bad bacteria producing gas and fermentation. And lastly, this could be a sign of something bad growing inside your GI tract, whether it's stomach cancer or constipation. This is especially true if you have weight loss, nausea, poor appetite, or a recent change in your bowel habits. Hey guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, comment down below. All right, now that we talked about excess gas, here's where we get to the meat, or maybe the, I don't know, the poop, uh, I don't know, whatever analogy of the video. What can you do to help tame that excess gas so you don't have to worry about this ever again? Here are my thoughts. Number one, cut back on the foods that you know may be causing issues. Now, I know we all like to eat. I know we want to try to enjoy the foods that we like to have, but your body sometimes will tell you, hey, this is not the right food for you to eat. So you need to cut back on those foods that are known to produce gas, whether it's dairy, fructose, for some people, maybe even gluten or even beer. Yes, I know. But if you want to improve your gas, you may need to cut back on these foods. And obviously, if you know that a certain food produces gas, well then don't eat it. It's as simple as that. Number two, slow down when you eat. A lot of us are just rushing, ah, trying to go through the day to eat as quickly as we can. And unfortunately, one of the consequences is that you actually swallow a lot more air than what you realize. Slow down, take your time. Try to enjoy the meal, enjoy it with friends and family, and really enjoy what you're eating. And by slowing down, you're actually minimizing the amount of air that you are swallowing. Number three, exercise, yes. 30 minutes every day, maybe you've exercised or walking, will help move things around, help push things through. And especially if you have issues with constipation or pain, this will allow things to move through easier. Number four, avoid carbonated drinks. I know you guys may enjoy this, but it's like Captain Obvious here. If you have a drink that has a lot of gas and fizz, you're going to put that in your body. Guess what your body's going to do? It's gonna have a lot of gas and fizz and it needs some way to expel that. And one easy way is just to fart. Minimize that and try to eliminate it. Number five, try over-the-counter treatments. They actually do work. Things like Gas-X, Beano, maybe even activated charcoal. These are effective ways to help out with gas and flatulence. And lastly, fix your constipation. If you're having issues using the restroom, if you don't feel like you're getting everything completely emptied out, if you're straining and pushing and you're still having issues, that may mean the problem could be with your bowels and the easier that we can get things going and flowing, the more likely it's going to be we can help manage that gas. Here's my call to action for you. Look at the tips that I recommended today. See if you can implement that to help out with your gas and flatulence. If it works, fantastic, we are good. But if it doesn't work, make sure you see somebody like me to see if we can investigate what's going on to make sure nothing bad is the reason why you're having some of the issues that you're having. My question today for you, what would you add to this list? What else have you tried? What has worked, what hasn't worked? Comment down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel where you get great tips and tricks like you're learning in today's video. Guys, I thank you for watching. Don't forget, let's talk about poop. Thanks, everybody.